Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. <laughs> Today we're going on a little bit of a road trip. We're going over to my friend Arnhem's and he's recently built something called a dehumidification or evaporation dryer for his wood. Now if you want to save money on wood and you're able to purchase wet wood or green wood from a local mill and you want to be able to dry it yourself, this might be one option that you want to look at. Now I've been involved with uh, dehumidification dryers for over 30 years. There will be an article on Woodwork Web, so I'll, I'll detail some of the things that I know about that uh, in case there's some things that you want to do for yourself. But in the meantime, let's go over and see what Arnhem's done with his. So here we are at, at uh, Arnhem's evaporation dryer, and we're going to get Arnhem to We've rolled the, the tarp back on the lid so we can see inside. We're going to get Arnhem to show you how we undo the lid. And uh, we're at a perfect time because we're going to roll this big log in uh, because that's the next thing that's going to dry. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Arnhem to show me how to get into this thing here. Well, it's very, very simple. The idea is just to do everything yourself. Uh, okay. So I didn't need to buy any hinges or anything like that. Just okay. like that. I'll get it's this one simple. down here. And okay. Now big advantage is this just comes down. Okay. And then we can roll it in in a second. Right. So this is what an evaporation dryer looks like. Basically, it's a big open box, and that black lump that you see in the corner there, uh, that's actually a dehumidifier uh, that's on a, a permanent loan here to Arnhem for this dryer. And basically what happens is we put wet wood into it. In this case we're going to be rolling a log in. But you could even be putting rough, slon, rough sawn lumber in here. And you would do what we call stack and sticker. We're going to show you that in a little bit here. So you would load all the wood in here. And then you want to keep that air moving in there because the, the dehumidifier is going to be sucking all of the moisture out of the air and it will unload it into a tank in the bottom or you can make it drained to drain it outside of the dryer so you want to keep the air moving around so I see Arnhem you might be able to see a little box up in here he has a, a little fan that will keep the air circulating in there so that all of the uh, air in there sort of circulates between the boards and then eventually gets sucked up into the air from the dehumidifier so Arnhem, are you able to monitor the, the temperature in here and the, the moisture content? Yeah, that's a very important part because like things can just dry too much and start cracking. So I have this little remote device in here and that's exactly both things, humidity and temperature. So I just know from the inside I can measure what's going on. Okay. I can tell the humidifier when to be on and when to be off so the wood doesn't dry too fast. Right. And, and that's important. If it dries too fast, a lot of woods will check. Uh, quite severely. So what about uh, end seal? Do you use end seal on the wood? Depending what I want to do, absolutely yes, because otherwise of course just on the ends it dries faster than the inside and you have really bad cracking happening. That the trick really is to go really, really slow. Okay. No normally you do things too fast and things start cracking. That's, that's very true, yeah. Uh, and I notice you've got it nicely insulated and a lot of the dryers that I've seen, they're not nearly as insulated. Do you find that helps in the process of uh, drying better? Of course, hugely. For example, normally one of the things you need to add to this is heat. But because of the dryers generating enough heat with the insulation, I have no problem. I don't need another source of heating. Just this does enough already. Okay. So yes, it helps a lot. So you can run this winter, or summer, it, it all it works? That's correct. Both? Yes. Yeah, that's right. All right. That's, that's really good. And the good. more insulation, really, the better, because that's exactly what you want to do. You want to have another medium in here, which yeah. is very dry and yeah. a certain temperature. So I'm, I'm curious um, if we were to take, say, a, a, a general piece of wood. Let's say we were going to uh, dry a, a 2x6 in there, a fir 2x6, just for something. How long would that take to, for, to, to dry it slowly so that it doesn't crack? and? The answer is months, okay. but the exact answer depends on the piece of wood. I okay. could not tell you ahead of time because I just need to monitor and see how much. If it's really wet, of course it takes longer, yep. and then depending how, what, what kind of wood it is, what cut it is, it might be different too. Well, in an ideal world too, what we like to do is air dry the wood uh, a little bit outside, so we kind of start the air drying Absolutely. process outside, then we bring it into a dehumidification uh, kind of dryer like this. Um, and I notice you've got some wood out there air drying. Maybe we'll go and have a look at that in a That'd few be minutes. Fantastic, please. Okay. 
Okay, Arm's going to roll this um, log in here that he's going to be drying. In any case, it's this simple. Now it's this log, what, what's your plans with this log? What, what's I'm going to use a carving wood later. Actually, this is a very interesting piece of wood because it had been cut for quite a while. And if you look very uh, carefully, you can even see some fungus in it. So it's already starting to deteriorate. Okay. But I'm drying it so I can carve it and it will have a really nice look to it. Okay, so this is going to be carved. And this is a fir log and it uh, looks like about 14 inches across, something That's right, like that? Yes. Yeah, you're okay. right. Exactly. So this is going to be a carving piece. How long do you think you'll leave it in here? What's your guess? Uh, three, four weeks. Okay. In this case, because this is already somewhat dry. Yeah. And because it's quite rotten, it goes much faster because it's full of like holes already. Okay. So that makes it much easier to dry and there's less wood essentially. Now, when you're going to check, eventually you're going to use a um, moisture meter on it. What what sort of um, moisture meter reading are you going to want to get it down to yeah, roughly? Right now it's going to be pretty close to 90 even if we think it's dry or yeah. even more. Yeah. Uh, like 12 percent is maybe what I'm aiming for. Okay yeah that's uh, that's a target that I usually go for as well. Great. All right well Perfect. let's um, we close, it? We'll close it up. And... All right. That's it. Very simple. So this is Arnhem's outdoor wood, and this is air drying right now. So how long has this been here, Arnhem? Actually, two years already. And as you mentioned before, we need to dry this before we put it in the kiln. Yeah. And it takes a long time. These big pieces take forever to dry. These so are very th four-inch thick pieces here. How, so this has been two years. That's right. Yes. What do you think this is at right now? Eighty percent or something. They're still totally wet. Okay. It takes so a very, very long a time. Of, a lot of wood in there. So this is what we call stacked and stickered. So the wood is stacked up and we use stickers and we try and use good even stickers on here and you can see how uh, Arnhem has um, been adjusting them here so that we get a nice even, um, so the wood is nice and even on the way across. So this is Arnhem's uh, warehouse of wood here. Um, what have you got in here? It looks like you had a little bit of everything. Yeah, you can see all the type of woods you can see. I'm not sure if you can see in the camera here, but you can see some nice maple. Yeah. And yes, these things take a long time to dry, but once you've tried to mill them, I put them in here, so now I have them available for my project. So we have like maple, we have fir, we have cedar, uh, we have oak, all kinds of wood actually. Wow. And, and, and most of this you've, you've used your dryer for, or some of this you have, some And some purchased? I bought commercially. It's a combination okay. of both, yes. So it's a, a bit of a... A mixture. I see you've got another um, gauge in here that keeps track of the humidity and the temperature and so on. Actually the main reason is to make sure it doesn't dry too much because in the summer it gets too hot in here oh. and if things get too, too dry it will start cracking so I have to make sure I open it up when it gets too hot. Oh okay all right and it's 66% um, right now which is a kind of a perfect and 19 degrees so yeah, that's actually sort of a perfect temperature for wood right now but it varies a lot in the winter. I of know. course of yeah. course yes. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Arnhem, for uh, showing us around. You're very welcome. Okay. All right. Well, that concludes my video for today. I want to thank Arnhem for showing us around, showing us the dryer, um, his um, wood outside that he's uh, drying, getting ready for the dryer, and of course his uh, stock of lumber that he's using for all his projects. In fact, I had so much fun here, uh, maybe we'll go do a shop tour and you can watch for that coming up soon. I'm Colin Kanat for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.